for joining along with my Sugar Shoot series, the editorial series I'm currently working on. Um, I'm Kathleen Luciel Photography, if you don't recognize the face. Maybe I look a little different with uh, my little belly here. Uh, but I wanted to dive in and talk about some of these Sugar Shoots. So let's go ahead and let's take a look right now. So I actually wanted to take you through some of the lighting for this series and kind of how it evolved with some of the images. So first what I want to talk about is the concept of the lighting that's used. So there's harsh light and there's soft light and I've done a little bit of a combination of both. And so you'll hear the term softbox used a lot and that's what people do with lighting to help make it softer. So what's soft lighting? Well, look at my hand right here. See how shadows are not quite as pronounced if I turn it's still somewhat even there's still shadows there but it's a little bit softer that's usually what you get with window light when people use a soft box so that means they'll put the light so they'll take like a light like this a speed light the light comes out but it bounces onto something white or silver and is reflected out as a bigger source and there's usually going to be like white a white fabric in front of that light or in that umbrella or soft box that then makes it a lot softer so it's not as harsh. And so I'll show you some of the images where I've used softer light for this set. Now the softer light, I feel like I've got a little bit more down to a formula. I understand how to do that. And I actually will do that a lot with um, another speed light behind with the gel on there. So you see this little colored thing right here? This is a gel. And that's what I'll use to actually create the backdrop colors that I do. Because I don't have the time or space or money to be able to um, hold on to all those colored backdrops right now. Eventually I will. But right now just doesn't make sense. And in the space we were in, it was a small enough room. I mean, it was probably, I don't know, that wide, um, that we didn't need that in the space. I could just create it off of a white wall. So the other type of lighting is hard lighting, which is what I wanted to experiment more with. And I'm going to show you an example, I'm not just on my phone, of hard lighting. So you can see right here how this is harsher. Well, Kathleen, it looks the same. Yeah, except if I turn it, look at those shadows. If I turn my hand, shadows become more pronounced. This is still fairly soft, hard lighting, but you can get even harder lighting. And the way you do that is just having the light directly go on there, not any kind of um, diffusion to make it softer. So it'd be like having this light just sh shooting off right there. And this is pretty similar to sun. The sun, when it's at full force, can be really hard light on the skin. And it is a lot less forgiving. It will show more the pores and texture, but that's something I actually like to work with and challenge myself with, because I think you can get some unique lighting with that. You can see here in the donut series that I started with experimenting with this harsh light, kind of that flash look. And I liked it, and it was a little bit straight on, but I knew that I could evolve it into something more sophisticated, which you'll see in later sugar series down the road. Um, but I did have to go through a process of retouching and being more considerate of that, considerate more of where the lighting was hitting the model's face because it is more direct. So how do I create that harsh lighting look? This looks scary, but it's really just a speed light and something that goes on a stand. I literally just have the light aimed down at their face. Um, I have a Mag Mod accessory here, so I can just put things on my speed light. I use this for a little bit of diffusion. It's just a grid. It'll also help it be more specific where it's at. And this is what was used in the donut series shoot. So it seems pretty straightforward, but you gotta be really precise. You gotta think about the shadows. You have to do a lot of retouching and considering where you're gonna do the retouching to still keep it realistic. One of the other things you can see I experimented with in camera here was lights, bringing lights close to the camera. So I'm going to grab my fairy lights and show you what I did. So I've got fairy lights here. And you've probably seen the pictures where they're holding it and it goes out to the camera. And then it starts to get all that lovely little bokeh, which is this part right here, these little 
little bubbles almost. So I wanted to play with that with some of the colors that matched the donut. So essentially I just brought it really close to camera. And I played with it in different positions to see how it would work. And so it's something that, you know, there's improvements I do want to make with it. It's a little bit harder when you have speed lights in play too. So I learned that, especially here with the donut series, that if I had the speed lights, I had to be cognizant that the light, which will be a little bit more amb ambient from fairy lights, is going to appear darker. Um, it won't appear as bubbly or bright. And so you have to take that into consideration how much light do you want on the subject? How dark do you want these to appear? Will it show the true color? So I want to take a look at some of the straight out of cameras, edited pictures, and kind of talk about how I got there editing wise. So we go into the straight out of camera. You can see we've got a lot of shots here, 229 items. And in my edited, See, there's about 47 items, which is actually still a lot edited-wise. You may be thinking, wow, you took a lot of shots there, didn't you, Kathleen? And the answer is yes, <laughs> I did take a lot of shots. I tend to like to do that because I like to allow people to move a little bit and give them directions movement-wise, try new things, and see what I like and what I don't like. Um, and this was a shoot that I could also then try a little bit different lighting techniques and different things that I did. The other thing you might notice is with the straight out of cameras, they're pretty grayed out, huh? Pretty dull looking. And that's okay because I like to work with that and up the saturation in the areas that I need to. So you can see playing around with the donuts. We've got the blue in the background. You can see that there. You can see playing around with some of the other different lights and different aspects and just trying different lighting. Um, you can even see. I'm going to pull this one up, kind of the lighting setup I had. So over here, add some lighting coming over here, and I had lighting behind her for the yellow. You can see I kind of moved that around, turned up brightness, changed things to see what I liked. So you can see the yellow coming in on here, and the blue behind her. We've got a little bit of blue bouncing onto the background as well, and then obviously we have a light in the front. And you can see it's not completely getting all of her. Um, that's because this is when I had it more in just the flash speed light type way. So anyways, let's go ahead and let's take a couple of these shots. I think one of my favorite ones is right here. So I just loved this shot. See nice good detail in there. Um, Fairly good coloring, good matching of the icing. So I wanted to make this pop. So the first thing that I do is I take the images into Lightroom and I edit them in Lightroom. So that they're all pretty consistent and then I tried to bring it into pho Photoshop to do the retouching. So here we can see it in Photoshop. You can see how much brighter I made that, the differences I did in coloring and whatnot in Lightroom. So again, if we go to the straight out of camera down here, and right here, straight out of camera after retouching, or after Lightroom. Straight out of camera after Lightroom. One of the things I do have to say is I do think I brought out a little bit more orange than I normally would. Um, here I was practicing with the technique of color balancing blue and orange, especially because that was within the donuts. I still think I would probably tone this down a little bit more. Um, it just depends on what you're going for in the image. Some people like really, really uh, orange skin tones. But you can see lots of details, especially on the face. Um, here's with a soft box, so it is a little bit softer lighting, and you can tell that by the gradation in the shadows here. So a couple of things that I do is I like to retouch up the hair. I like to try to make things more even. I like to make the eyes pop a little bit more by adding some color and some depth in there. And then I try to retouch the skin. And this is before I got really good at retouching the skin. So you can see the difference there. Took away some of the flyaways here. I left these up here because I didn't want it to feel too perfected. 
I actually used the liquify tool to bring out the hair and give a little bit more volume. I just felt like it balanced things out a little bit. Sometimes you need that. The eyes really pop. So if you look at the eyes here, I'm going to zoom in. What changes? Well, there's a couple things. First thing, you can see this kind of color coming in here. So I usually try to bring color in balancing across where the light is. So it helps give depth and dimension on the other side. And then you may notice right along here and along here, a little bit of darkening. It's pretty subtle to see, but I usually do right around there to help give a little bit more depth to the eye and then sharpen everything up around the eye. The other thing that you may notice, and <laughs> I can say I've made huge improvements um, in regards to this, but it's just interesting to kind of see where you start out at sometimes, is under eye retouching. So I took away a lot of the texture that was there and actually replaced it with similar textures around it because it still needed texture. If we made it completely smooth like here, it would look really odd. So I replaced the texture to help tone it down, make it a little bit more natural. We leave the bottom eyelid right there. And then I tried to even out the color a little bit. So you can see, tried to kind of bring and soften all of that up. I would definitely do a better job with this now. Um, it would be more of a play on right here bringing in a little bit more light and then right here bringing in a little bit more light and trying to keep the colors. So here it's just a little bit more of a blend of everything which is not my preferred technique now but it worked okay for this instance. So you can see that there. The important thing when you are retouching is to keep texture in there so you can see Right here is out of focus, it's a lot more soft, but there are texture areas. There's areas where there shouldn't be texture, and that's another thing that I would probably improve upon, is um, certain areas on the face probably shouldn't have texture on them. So I would move, remove a little bit of the texture right here, um, remove some of the texture around here, but you got to leave texture in the places where it's anticipated to be. So we just do before and after. You can see just a little bit of cleaning up in some areas. Again, as I was practicing the retouching, you can see I tried to remove a little bit of a wrinkle here. Definitely a better way to do this, which you'll see I've improved upon in later sugar editorial series. But I mean, seriously, this model had great skin anyways. She, she just had beautiful bone structure. But you can see a little bit how adding in a little bit of light up here helps lift things and even things out when lighting isn't exactly where it's supposed to be. Um, you can also see I brought down a little bit more of the blue gradation, which is going to be normal, especially when you're using a speed light. Um, and yeah, see the difference there. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at another image. This is with less soft light, so this is a lot harder, and you can tell because look at her eye. See how small that is compared to this big old soft box right here in this one. So if we come out of here, you can see there's a lot more texture in here. Um, we've got some color balancing I did to remove some of the oranginess. And this is a before and after. So you can see she really does have great skin. Um, but it's showing a lot of texture because I used a harsher light. So again, this was a new technique for me. I was experimenting with it. And I'd say this is definitely a little bit over retouched. You don't want it to be this quite over uh, retouched. You want to remove some of the texture in areas. So like here, here, over here. Um, the skin and lighting looks even, which so you can still achieve that, obviously. Um, you don't need to have soft light to still get even light to some extent. But I'm just lucky that I got a model that had such good skin because otherwise this would have been totally botched. You can see this is another one with harsh light. This one looks like a lot of change here. And that's actually more having to deal with the shadows and the highlights and where I've dodged and burned to bring that in. Um, I like to make sure that the shadows are a little less prominent and highlights brought in here to make the cheekbone appear a little bit higher. You can see I've brightened up the eye. And if we even go in, this is one where I slightly missed the focus on the eye. You can see that because it's all focused right back there. 
slightly focused. So to help make it feel like it was all more focused, I actually brought in some lighting right here, or from another picture, I should say, to sharpen things up. So you can see that. This one was with a soft box. It's a lot softer light. You can see, again, she has fairly good skin. I mean, she's got some biceps, too. Just evening things out. Bringing in here, I brought in a little bit more light here, but kept the background darker. So you can see I kept this darker, so it's easier to brighten this up. Last one. This one, you can see very little retouching done on it. It was mostly just removing those areas and removing some hair. Again, I've improved so dramatically with hair retouching. It's crazy. You can see some of the differences there. So it's kind of fun seeing how we can go from this to something like this, 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 or this, especially when I was using new techniques and what I tried out. And you got to try things out to see how it goes. So I still love how these images turned out. I'd love to go back and re-edit them now that I've had a year's plus more of experience. Um, let me know what you think I should do. Should I go back and re-edit a couple? If so, which ones? Um, yeah. Thanks again for joining me on this set in our Sugar Editorial Series. If you want to see pa past sets from the Sugar Editorial Series, you can head to my website, www.lucielphotography.com, or check out my Instagram. My handle is Lucy Limoncello. That's L-U-C-Y L-I-M-O-N-C-E-L-L-O, -L -L -O, or you can search Lucy L Photography LLC. It'll bring that up too. Um, if you have any questions about anything that I've gone over in the video, feel free to reach out to me. I'm here to help. I want to help other people grow and feel a passion of photography. If you're interested in a session or want to do any creative branding, feel free to reach out to me as well. Have a great day, you guys.